tonight is brought to you by the parent-teacher organizations of the Cumberland Public Schools and the Concerned Cumberland Parents Online Community. Tonight's uh, forum is being streamed uh, for the cumberlanducation.org website, and it will also be replayed there as well. Uh, Mike Weber is uh, providing the uh, coverage for us this evening. My name is Tim Draper, and I will be the moderator for this evening's event. Um, and tonight's format will be a discussion of the educational issues that exist in the town of Cumberland and our candidates' position on these issues. Questions were solicited from the town, and we had many questions that are actually submitted. Topics will range from general school facility and educational questions to charter schools, school funding, and town, school, and statewide collaboration. Each candidate will be given two minutes for an opening statement, then each question will be directed to all three candidates. They will then have two minutes to discuss each question. We ask that you please be courteous and refrain from applause until they have finished. At the end of the 90 minutes, each candidate will be given a one minute closing statement. The order in which the candidates were seated and the order in which the questions are asked are completely random and was selected prior to this evening's event. The candidates have not been given the questions in advance, but have been told of the topics in general. Our time this evening is uh, Dr. Peter Langton, and he will uh, let the candidates know through his awesome technology down here uh, when we need to move on to the next candidate. Tonight we will begin with uh, Mr. Murray uh, and his opening statements. You have to press a button, too. Good evening. And I first want to thank Jenny, the PTO, and uh, Tim Draper for having this form. I think it's important because education is so important in Cumberland and also the way I look at it. Education is dear to my heart. I had five children that went through the public schools here in Cumberland. Two daughters are school teachers in the public schools currently. One of my sons was a valedictorian, a 585 stu uh, student here at Cumberland. They all went to great colleges, and I base this all on the way they got the education here in Cumberland. My mother also taught for many years. I find that the success that my children have had comes to that basic background they gained here, and that's what I want to see Cumberland come back to, the elite status that it was. My record is a proven record. I have made many school committee meetings, attended many PTO meetings, especially at Cumberland Hill. Mr. Shaw invited me a number of times. I was instrumental in Tucker Field, in the, <clears throat> the new facility there, and I have great plans for the future at Tucker Field. Supported, I've supported the B.F. Norton uh, playground and also have been to a number of their uh, student uh, events there. I visited with the superintendent both middle schools. This was before announcing to become mayor. I had meetings with school officials on numerous times. I have worked with the education stakeholders, and I also plan to have a plan, short range and long range plan once being, becoming mayor. I'm going to ask that the, the uh, town council has a liaison to these schools. Thank you, Mr. Murray. Mr. Uh, DaCosta. Thank you, Tim, very much. And I also would like to thank Jenny as well, the PTO, the parents present uh, for this opportunity to be together tonight to address a very important issue in our town, education. Uh, it's at the heart of our students of our children and uh, points to the future that they will take uh, in our town. Um, my name is Manny da Costa or Manuel da Costa. I am a candidate for the office of mayor. Um, I've lived in Cumberland for 27 years with my wonderful wife Maria. We raised four boys. They all attended Cumberland High, uh, Cumberland Public System which I was and am very proud of. 
Um, two of my oldest sons graduated from URI. Uh, they're part of the workforce, contributing to this great country of ours and our town's uh, infrastructure and um, um, financial um, budget. And uh, the third one is still at URI, and I still have my youngest one, Daniel, attending Cumberland High. So once again, education, it's at the heart of our family. It's very important for all of us and for the future of our children and grandchildren. Um, we will discuss the, the night. Uh, we will uh, touch education is the, the topic of this uh, forum. And um, I hope that you will understand that I am a candidate of change. Uh, I feel that the town for too long has been stagnant on certain issues, education has been one of them, and we need to work together. We need a mayor in the office at town hall that can be a bridge between our school committee, our business community, and the parents. So w working together, we can provide a greater future for our children and grandchildren. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. DaCosta, and Mr. Alves. First of all, my name is... Is this working? Very good. First of all, my name is Daniel Alves, and I'm running for the position of mayor. And uh, a good evening to everyone, and thank you so much for this opportunity to speak on our educational system. I am sure that with everyone's concerns on education for our children, which is our future, we'll have a better outlook on what our needs and direction should be. I believe there should be more communication with our school committee, Dr. Thornton, school committee superintendents, and principals and teachers as to what their needs and direction for a more productive result can be. Not only once a year, but on a quarterly basis. We have a good public school system, and I believe that there's always room for improvement. This great town has approximately 35,000 residents and 4,655 students in our public school system, and I believe that the Mayoral uh, Charter School system has about 300 Cumberland students, and the residents moved into this great town of ours because of good educational system, a choice of education, also a fair tax rate for all of our services that they receive. I love the saying on the Blackstone Valley Prep Charter School, today we learn, tomorrow we lead. Look at, all our, look at our All American Little League team. They were taught how to play baseball, sportsmanship and teamwork, and they put Cumberland on the world map. We spend approximately $12,300 per student in our public school system per year, which is one of the lowest amongst all school systems in Rhode Island. I feel that the state officials should pay more attention to Cumberland's educational needs and its funding by having a strong communication with them on a short, with, with them. On a short form of funding, if they can fund the 38 studios investment, it should they fund our future, which is our children. I'd say they should. Thank you, Mr. Alves. So, gentlemen, we'll start the questioning now, and Mr. Mori, we're gonna lead off with you. There, uh, what do you feel the top three issues facing the Cumberland Public Schools today, and why? Uh, Tim, the top three issues that I see is the continual funding uh, by the state. Uh, as an example, the accelerated uh, program that uh, Rep. Mayor Ackerman had introduced, which I, by the way, testified the last two years on, was very important to continue that to try to get more funds into, into the town. Uh, the second thing is that we have to work as a administration with the schools on a, almost a day-to-day -day basis. We have to learn to work together and not have a divide in this town. And the third thing, I think, which is very important, is the aging of our schools and what we do with the uh, schools and how we help them to build them, uh, a better thing for our students to be educated in. Thank you, Mr. Mori. Same question, uh, Mr. Costa. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Tim, very much. Um, 
One of the major issues facing our school is, in my view, it's the transition technologically into the 21st century. Um, we've had a great public system. Our public schools have done good. Um, but we need to continue support them on this transition technologically. Um, we have the Chromebooks coming online um, this school year. Uh, and that bodes well for the future of our children. We'll prepare them, we'll make them better prepared to face the technological world that they will be part of uh, after leaving our school system. Um, additionally, uh, the infrastructure of our town, uh, not only our streets and bridges, but our public buildings, including our school buildings, uh, are in dire needs of uh, repair and also they should be sustained for a safety and a healthy environment for our children to grow and learn in. Um, and I'm pledging here tonight that uh, $400 that were taken out of the budget from the school committee will be restored under my administration. Uh, finally, uh, again, I see a need of a mayor um, that will, again, work well, will create an environment, a healthy environment to uh, lead and, once again, be a bridge between the school committee, the town council, the parents, and also the business community to provide the financial aid, aid necessary to uh, support our school systems, our public school systems, and ensure that our students have a healthy environment to succeed in the future. Thank you, Mr. DaCosta. Mr. Thank Ells. Thank you for the question. Thank you for the question. Um, we have to look at the ability to be able to communicate on a more regular basis with our school superintendent, our school administrators, our school committee, and find out exactly where we must go to bring our children back up to the classifications that they deserve. And not only that, but also the parents have the opportunity now to participate in all of this with having these communications, not only once a year when the budget comes due and we need X number of dollars to educate our children, but give me an idea on where we're going, where are we heading, uh, give us the programs that we need. Tell us where we're lacking. Tell us where we must go together, not by ourselves, but together. Uh, the other thing is that, again, the funding for the shortfall of the school budget has got to be able to come to fruition from the state and also from the town also by working very closely together. And if, in fact, we can um, subsidize by adding one penny per gallon on our fuel tax to subsidize the Koswanek Bridge, then I'm sure that we can subsidize the school educational system in the town of Cumberland, and we should demand that and make enough noise to where somebody will pay attention to us. And the other thing is that we have to bring um, the funding not only from the town's budget people and the state people, but also look for it on a federal level also. And I think we can do that collect collectively and together. Thanks, Mr. Owls. Uh, we're going to start this next question with Mr. DaCosta. What does great public education look like to you? Does it include sports, music, language, arts? And then how do we fund those things? Tim, thank you again for a wonderful question. School education to me is all of what you mentioned, academics, arts, entertainment, sports. Um, again, our school system did great when my kids were part of this great public school. Um, along the way, uh, funding due to certain circumstances um, maybe it was not adequate to continue with arts and sports and music. So uh, some of these programs were taken away from, uh, from the livelihood of our students. And again, I'm pledging tonight that it hits near and dear my heart that arts and sports should be part of our education of our children. And I'm pledging that I will support our public schools on that. Thank you. Mr. Alves. 
all of these items that you just mentioned in our school system is important. And to some, it's more important to, than to others. But collectively, it's all important. That's part of our educational system. Uh, we have had the honor and privilege in sports of our Little League team who put us on the map on a nationwide basis. And that is because of the effort that they put into it, because of the education that they received, and all the time that the parents and also of the coaches that they put into it. The arts, we just had up with people. And I understand it was a huge success. And there were people that are involved in arts. And we need the arts. We need to be able to be a society that's open to all and everyone. And I feel that these items are all necessary. And can we fund them? We will find a way of funding them. We will find a way of working together collectively so that we can fund all of these issues and make sure that everything is not put by the wayside. Nothing should be put by the wayside. Thank you, Mr. Alves. Mr. Murray. I pointed out originally about my family, and I, <clears throat> I think that's the best way to start it, is saying that I had the scholar in my family, I had the athletes in my family, and I've seen how important it is in bringing up a family and having this all available. We have some great programs that we have to support in this town, and I do, as the next mayor, pledge to do that. Uh, we've already given over $2 million to the school system. We have two very good uh, programs that are a, a budget line item separate, that being the uh, Chromebooks uh, for 650000 and also 100000 to work on grants uh, as we see, uh, as we move along. I did work with Dr. Matheson and his, his team on those 100000 over the summer and we will be targeting about 87 students at BF Norton and also at the uh, middle school, Highland Middle School. So I think those are the value. Where we have the money is we have to come up with the money because if we're going to have an overall program for our students, which is badly needed, we have to make sure we do that. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Next question, um, I may have a follow-up to that in a little while, but for right now, we'll move on to the next question, and it'll be uh, to Mr. Alves first. The state uh, prescribes a basic education program, BEP, uh, that sets basic standards and requirements for schools. The school committee has questioned whether the town is in compliance with state law defining minimum appropriation by a community for approved school expenses. As mayor, how would you assess and address this gap? This has to be addressed, again, collectively, like I had stated earlier, where the office of the mayor, the school superintendent, the school committee, has a regular meeting more than just once a year, but to discuss these issues and to find out what direction we have to go collectively, not just through the mayor's office, but through the school system itself. And with everybody's input and with everybody's cooperation and collaboration, these items can all be answered together collectively in the best interest of our children, which are going to be educated. Thank you, Mr. Alves. Um, we are off to Mr. Murray on this. That has become a big issue. Um, I believe it's $4 million uh, that the BEP, uh, and it did come to us. We did look at it as a council and, a, and through the mayor's office that Statewide, uh, we could not be held responsible for it. It's a lot of money to throw all at once. But in looking at it, I believe that we have to take little steps to create and get this money to help our schools. You can't do it overnight. And that was one reason that I gave a pre press release out stating that I would ask the superintendent and sit down with the superintendent to develop a shot in a long range plan. Thank you, Mr. Mori, Mr. DeCosta. Thank you, Tim. Uh, BEP, um, it's been on the news uh, very recently. Um, as a council person, we had to deal with the question, uh, is the town in compliance with BEP? Uh, I think the major question in all of this is, what can we do as a community, as a government, uh, at, starting with the mayor's office, 
to gradually start funding our public school system. And that's what I'm pledging to do. Um, I believe that uh, the basic education plan um, has its place in, the, in our public schools. And uh, as mayor, I will do everything I can, working again with the business community and uh, parents, the town council, and uh, the school committee to ensure that funding is appropriate and this question of BP is a thing of the past. As a, as a follow-up, and we'll start with Mr. Alves over here, you know, the, the BEP has some controversy about whether it is fair for a city or town to have to fund it. So do you feel that the BEP as it is presented now is fair? Again, what is fair? Um, what mandates do we have to follow? Um, what categories do we fall into? Uh, we must come to be into compliance. And we will do that, again, with the cooperation of the school department, the taxpayers, and the mayor's office. Mr. Murray? Well, I, I believe this is that, as I stated before, uh, the town does not have to fund it. Uh, the money is a big burden. If we do, it's going to be a terrible tax burden on the taxpayers. And that's why I, I fully uh, uh, agree that we have to do it in small steps so that all of a sudden we don't have this burden on hand. Uh, Tim, I believe a BEP uh, at this time, it's unfair to Cumberland. Um, our share of state aid for our educational system is around $14 million. Um, and I feel we have to lobby and work with our state reps and senators for more. Um, Cumberland is faced with a dual school system. Uh, we all understand. Uh, it's, it's, it, it's our kids in all of this. We should provide the best education possible for our children. Um, no matter where they go to school. Um, but we should not forget that our public schools are the ones that are carrying the higher burden of this educational um, expense. And uh, part of that, it's because of unfair laws that as my, uh, I will be lobbying hard with the aid of state reps and senators in Providence so that Cumberland secures all the funding necessary for our children. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, we will go to the next question, uh, which we will begin uh, with Mr. Murray. Uh, do you feel that mayors should serve as members of the school committee? In the current environment, since the mayor has no official role on the school committee, how would you participate in shaping education in the town? What will the mayor's role be in education in this town? That's an excellent question because we, uh, I have been part of discussions about that. We had some uh, very good educators in Massachusetts and as everybody knows, Massachusetts education system is at the top. It is brought about that these particular educators uh, have worked in, in cities and towns that the mayor does sit, in fact, on a couple of them, actually are the president of the uh, school committee. I don't say that should be, but before I mentioned uh, the communication and working together between the mayor's office, the town council, and the schools, uh, and that's important. I think that if it was worked out, I, I don't see any reason why a mayor couldn't sit on the school committee, because firsthand they're going to know what's going on on a daily basis, and that's where I think is very important, that communication. All right, Mr. DaCosta. Uh, Tim, I feel that the mayor should provide a leadership role, and um, as mayor, I will not uh, request or aspire to be on the school committee. I uh, would leave that to the experts. I think our school committee has done a great job and under a great leadership. And uh, I feel again that my role as mayor is to provide the bridge between the town council, the school committee, parents, business community, so that together, once again, we do achieve 
uh, financial situation to fund our public schools and provide our children with the best education possible. So the mayor's role is a, is a role of leadership, guidance, and bridging the resources of our town for the greater good of our children. Mr. Alves. The government was formed by the people for the people. The school committee is a board which takes care of our educational needs in the town of Cumberland. The town council and the mayorship takes care of the municipal part overseeing the educational system. And I've said right along through my whole campaign, we need open dialogue. Do I want to be a school committee person? No. Do I want to sit alongside of that school committee person? Yes. Do I want to fully understand where they're coming from, what their needs are, what our needs are for our children? Yes, and I want to work with them as much as we possibly can. Have an open dialogue at all times. Have an open door policy so that we know where we stand and where we can go and where we cannot go, but we must do this together. Thank you, Mr. Alves. Next question is directed to for Mr. DaCosta. Um, the mayor does serve uh, on the board of directors for the Blackstone Valley Prep. Will you sit on that board of BVP? And if so, how will you ensure that you are balancing the needs of the traditional public schools of Cumberland, i.e. the district schools, without being biased by your role as a board member of the Mayoral Academy? Tim, uh, if one of the duties of the mayor is to sit on the board of the charter school, um, then I will, I will have to comply with that need or with that uh, obligation. Um, I mentioned before, it's no secret, that um, I feel Cumberland is facing a very difficult situation uh, on our educational front because um, of our two approaches to educate our children. Um, my answer to that is again, lobby hard at the state level with the help of reps and senators to change the laws so that the law is more equitable and fair to Cumberland so that we can secure additional funding to support not only our charter schools but also our public schools. Mr. Alves. As a duty uh, of the mayor, I feel that I would have no problems uh, sitting as a member on the charter school uh, committee. Uh, I feel that we will then have the best of both worlds, knowing how the charter system works and knowing how our uh, educational system works in the private sector and how our education for the uh, children of the town of Cumberland works. Uh, I feel that that would be an education for not only myself, but for the school committee at the town of Cumberland and the private charter school. So there's always nothing that we should not leave unturned as far as information goes and be even able to utilize for the best interest of everybody in the town of Cumberland. Thank you, Mr. Alves. Mr. Murray. I think uh, what you've got to realize, is we have to look at how we're going to educate all students in Cumberland whether it's the charter schools, all the public schools, and by the way, the charter schools are part of the public school system. As sitting on the board, I think it's very important for the mayor, you have the town administrator of Lincoln, the mayor of Pawtucket, the mayor of Central Falls that are all on this board. And what better way to keep everything equal but to sit on that board? It has nothing to do with what the state has set the ground rules on. And I think that's important What's happening now also is that uh, the uh, charter schools or the BVP is working with some of our public schools on certain programs. They work very strongly with the OCYL, which is a program that a lot of families use here in Cumberland. So I think it's important for whoever is mayor to sit on that board to have a voice. Thank you very much. Uh, our next question will go to uh, Mr. Alves to start. So Cumberland has one of the lowest uh, per student funding in the state. Cumberland spends just over $12,000 per student, while the state average is 15000 As mayor, would you seek to change that status, and, and how would you go about doing it? 
as mayor, I feel that it is very necessary to make sure that the educators and the school system of Cumberland is funded to the best of our taxpaying ability to bring up that funding to where it should be. Uh, the mandates are shortfall. The mandates need to be brought up to par. And as I had stated, if in fact there is a way that we can talk to our state legislators and make enough noise where our answers will come, that's what we have to do and that's what we will do. But yes, we are short funded and we have to make sure that we pay attention to that. And there's ways of doing it, but we must work collectively together. And I firmly believe that the state of Rhode Island has to be able to see what's happening to the future of the children throughout the whole state, not only Cumberland. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Murray. I think that's a uh, tough question to answer because I'm not sure that we have a handle on the exact figure. Uh, there's been different reports back and forth, whether we're talking apples for apples or apples for oranges. Obviously, you want to bring that up as best you can, except it goes right back to the BEP question. Uh, a lot of this happened in past years on the funding. And if we try to do it all at once, we're going to be in trouble because you, go, you have taxpayers out there that will have to take on the burden. And I, I don't see how we could ask the taxpayers at, at this time. Now, can we do it in small steps? Yes. And I think that would be the direction. And as the leader of Cumberland, I would definitely work on that. Mr. DeCosta. Tim, thank you once again. Uh, wonderful question. And um, I would like to answer in two parts, um, short term, term and long term. Uh, short term, um, we do have, again, work together. Sorry to repeat myself again, but this is a team effort and the mayor should lead on this. Business community, parents, town council, school committee. Um, and starting with the mayor's office, I will create efficiencies throughout the government, through every department, that in turn will yield savings that should be applied to the school system. Um, long term, I feel that um, the town will be retiring some debt in the near future. So again, there'll be some gains there. Um, I also feel that the economy is, is bound to, uh, to rebound. We should be uh, benefiting from a better economy throughout the state and the country. And um, as a great man and president once said, uh, a rising tide lifts or boats. I feel that with a better economy, uh, Cumberland should be positioned to gain access to uh, better funding for our public schools. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question, we'll start with Mr. Mori on this one. Given the projected uh, tuition increase for the charter school, that uh, will remain at over $300,000 a year, your term as mayor and the district, excuse me, for your term as mayor, uh, and the district's enrollment will be increasing. How do you reconcile the difference between the rising cost of the funding for charter schools and the increased enrollment here in Cumberland? Well, I think, again, it's a very difficult question to answer because uh, we don't have full control on it. Uh, the monies that are coming in uh, have been directed by the state. And uh, as far as how we handle it, again, we go back to the same situation as to how much burden do we put on the taxpayers. Mr. DeCosta. Thank you, Tim. Um, very difficult question as well. Um, the charter school is it's part of our educational system and we have to address that at the town council level and uh, we've had very lively discussions about this. Um, the formula, the money follows the child and obviously the money that has been allocated for our public system ends up um, at the charter system which creates a void again and it's, it's, it's a difficult situation. Uh, the key on this, again, it, we have to work at the state level to change 
this unfair law that puts Cumberland at this great disadvantage financially on our educational systems. Um, I understand that this year alone it's going to be about $350,000 uh, going or from taking out the school budget um, through the charter uh, system. Um, it, it's, it's a very difficult situation. We got to work together on this and we have to find ways of funding um, both systems that are here to stay. But I pledge to work again with the school committee. My office will be a line of communication which will have a discussion in good spirits, will have a, a healthy environment to find ways uh, be, with the parents and the business community to fund our future of our children. Mr. Rouse. I understand that the enrollment is going to be increasing in the charter schools. I understand that it costs uh, the town of Cumberland approximately $7,200 uh, to educate these students uh, per year. And I also understand that the balance is funded uh, by private uh, donations and endowments and through other educational systems they want to uh, see the charter system uh, flourish into a uh, complete uh, uh, positive system. Uh, that question has to be worked out not only with the charter school system but also with the public school system with the amount of funding that you the taxpayers can afford and to see what other outside sources that we can incorporate. Thank you, Mr. Elves. Mr. DeCosta, let's talk a little bit about infrastructure in the school department. Sorry. Uh, arguably, I would say that the Cumberland Public Schools infrastructure is in decline. I mean, you see some nice things that we've done around here at the high school, but overall, many of the school buildings are in decline. What will you do to support the school committee to plan for the rehabilitation of these facilities? And in, in, in your opinion, what would be the infrastructure priorities in a DeCosta administration? Uh, Tim, once again, I've said it before, I'm pledging to restore the $400,000 that was taken off the school budget for capital improvements, and that will be a first step. Um, we are faced with the deterioration not only of our public buildings, but the infrastructure of our streets and bridges. So under my administration, on my five-year comprehensive plan, that will be addressed again with a partnership with the business community and efficiencies throughout the whole government. We need again to lobby hard at the state level to acquire the funding necessary to uh, fund our school system and keeping up with our infrastructure. Um, as far as projects that will be uh, addressed uh, at first, I would leave that to the school committee. They know best their needs. And uh, my priorities would be working with the school committee to gain funding uh, to address those needs, starting with the replacement of $400,000. Thank you. Mr. Alves. I fully agree that uh, the capital improvements fund, uh, which was shortchanged $400,000, uh, is something that we really have to take a hard look at. Because if, in fact, something starts to deteriorate without a repair within a reasonable amount of time, that deterioration is only going to worsen and cost us twice as much tomorrow. Uh, again, the dialogue of being able to work with the school superintendent, the school committee, and find out what priorities are out there that need attention immediately is what we have to work on. That will be the foremost importance that we have on the infrastructure situation, and we can work on it together. Mr. Murray. I stated this in my opening remarks about how important it is, and, and I think that's where you have to really look at a plan, both a short, uh, short plan, a short way plan and a long range plan. Because you're going to have to get a handle as how, right now, I believe there's a moratorium on uh, from the state on uh, building. And that, of course, has to be lifted so that we could get into it and get some funds from the state. We have a couple of great senators, uh, a rep that who's been very supportive, and we can get some help from the state. However, I, I really believe as mayor, there's a lot of direction. 
In the past, we took over the Tucker Field, the town took over Tucker Field as an example uh, to lift that burden off the, off the schools. Uh, I fu fully believe that we can, as a, as a town, do more. Uh, you've got playgrounds, you've got parking lots, you've got a lot of other things that go on in the schools, not including inside. We also got another area that has to be addressed, and we're coming up with the funds, and that's the safety. Uh, it's a big issue. So there were a lot of pieces to the puzzle that we have to look at, and I would say as mayor, I will definitely be on top of that and have it as one of my top priorities. So as a follow-up to this question, and I'll start with you again, Mr. DaCosta, you've got some parents in the town who have students in the traditional public schools, and yet what do you say to them when they look at the BVP and see all the brand new facilities and all the brand new technology um, that those schools can provide um, at, to some degree at the expense of the public schools? Uh, I agree with you, Tom. Um, Tim, sorry. Um, it's a situation that we need to uh, work together to rectify and um, address the need of technologically um, provide our public schools with the same systems that the charter school is utilizing today. And we've done good steps. Uh, the Chromebook utilization is one very example of, of that. Um, the charter, it's a very complex and at times confusing situation because they have private funding, they have uh, public funding, and at the end, uh, we still uh, have to uh, take money out of the, our public schools budget uh, to support their education. Um, as mayor, I, I, I will work with everyone in good faith um, that has intentions to uh, find ways to uh, identify funding, not only for the charter school, but for our public schools. Mr. Ralph, same, same question. How do, you, how do you explain that to the to The, the taxpayer is paying for the educational system that is now in place with their tax dollars, which is the common school system. Um, part of that money is also going to the charter schools, which is a private entity. And they are also getting funding from endowments. They are also getting funding from grants. They are also getting funding from outside sources but it's a private entity, it's a private business. The taxpayer is the one that's paying for the general school system. And they're the ones that are paying a portion of what the tuition is to go into that charter system. So we have to, again, look at all of this and really get down to being able to work together on it. Mr. Murray. You know, that's, again, a very tough question because the charter schools are here to stay. They develop their own program of how they get funded through a lot of these endowments, these uh, special groups like uh, the Walmart, uh, Walmart family, and they have an advantage. Again, we have to turn around and go to the taxpayers to foot the bill for anything we do here in our public schools. So we have to work and we have to develop a plan. One thing I was going to mention earlier is that uh, I've looked into the possibility of coming up with a program on solar energy. Uh, those are the things we have to look at as a town and come up with solutions rather than worrying about what they are going to do. Uh, we're not going to solve any problems by worrying about what the charter schools are doing. One of the questions that was submitted earlier, and I'd like to find it here if I can, um, Would you be in favor of um, supporting uh, revenues uh, for adding revenues to the schools by opening any available seats to neighboring communities? For instance, if uh, the high school has a room for 24 kids in a class but only has 12, um, would you offer to folks from Woonsocket um, for those kids to come in and, and sit in the 12 seats that are available in the high school, as an example? We'll start with Mr. Alves. Uh, I don't feel that I would be in favor of that, but there again, I would need to uh, have the input from the school committee and the uh, present school administration. Uh, I'm not quite sure how the municipalities would work with liability 
should something happen to that particular student that we are renting out a uh, position in one of our public schools. Uh, I feel that the taxpayers of the town of Cumberland are paying um, everything that is necessary to educate their children here in the town of Cumberland. And to have that liability, I'm not quite comfortable with that. There again, uh, open communication might better enlighten it. Mr. Murray. I think that's, again, a, a, a tough question because uh, I believe that the Cumberland school systems had an influx of, of students that we were burdened with because they wanted to come to a good, good school area. Uh, we would have to have find out how much is going to follow that student uh, into, that, into the system. Because again, we, we keep talking about all these situations and they're all burdens to the taxpayer. And it shouldn't have, we shouldn't have that. If we could help and there was a way to do it without hurting us, I'd say, let's look at it. And again, I think you really have to start with the capable school committee that we have, working with the administration to handle such a question such as that. And Mr. DeCosta. Tim, uh, I feel that school business should be under the administration with the superintendent and the school committee. Uh, if they saw the side that we can um, have students from neighboring communities, I will be a partner on that, but only after uh, they review uh, the liability questions, transportation, uh, and they realize that without any reservations, we can have those children in our public school systems. Um, obviously, I will be a partner on that. But before we go there, I still feel that we can fund properly our public school systems. So there will be no need to go outside of our great town uh, to uh, get funding for our public schools. And we will do that again, creating efficiencies with the government, with good, good leadership at uh, town hall and partnering and good communication with our school committee and the town council. Great, thank you very much. Um, one more quick question on charter schools here. Uh, and we'll start with Mr. Alves on this one. Why do you think that some families choose the charter schools over the Cumberland public, traditional public schools? Um, there's a personal reason, I'm sure, within that family's decision to go to a chartered school or a private school um, and the system says that if in fact you feel that you want to come to our school system instead of the school system that your community is providing you, um, then you have to go through the process of a form that's being filled out, a commitment that you have to make uh, to that system and to your child and also to um, bring into fruition the fact that these monies will be coming out through the lottery system if you're picked. All right, um, Mr. Murray. Well, I really uh, believe that uh, they picked that charter school. If you look back, probably the biggest reason was that the Cumberland schools were way behind and they were looking for a better education for their, their children. However, the bright side is the Cumberland school systems are coming back. Under the leadership that we have in place now, Cumberland, I just uh, read something that they're now, uh, they've moved up to eighth spot. And I think you're going to see the whole flavor of changing because they do have a lot of different ways of teaching that the school system in Cumberland does not have. However, people are looking for a traditional school education. And I believe they'll get it at Cumberland as Cumberland continues to improve their, their education program. Tim, uh, good question, but I'm not sure uh, if I can answer properly because personally I'm not sure why parents choose one system over the other. Um, as I said, Cumberland has always had a great public system. All my children went through that system. I, it hits near me. Uh, I've been around the uh, Cumberland Public Schools for a long, long time. Um, it's a novelty, maybe, maybe the perception that the grass is green on the other side, who knows. Um, it, the fact is, it's part of our 
public, uh, not public, but educational system uh, of our town. It started maybe as a good intention, possibly a good idea, uh, to no, no cost to the taxpayers. Um, we now find out that it's draining the resources of our public uh, school budget and the taxpayers can no longer uh, carry that weight. We need to find ways and again we have to work together. We need leadership, we need to have a mayor that will bridge all the resources that we can get our hands on for the better good of our children so that they have the best education possible no matter if it's at the charter or at the public schools. Thank you, Mr. DeCosta. You know, Mr. Moore, you mentioned something about change and changes to the Cumberland public school system. So this next question, we're gonna start with Mr. DeCosta, but um, I think it's a good question. So under the current administration, the schools have seen many changes. Which specific changes do you support? Which changes do you not support? And what do you wish the schools would do differently? Support, that's, not support, do differently. That's a loaded question, but it's a, it's a great one. <laughs> yes, it is. No, it's um, Well, yeah, we've seen a transition uh, on the leadership of our school committee. Um, we've seen transition at the superintendent level. Uh, and we will see transition at the mayoral um, seat. Uh, and I think it's good. A transition and change. Um, most of the time it is, 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 is good if it's handled and it's well intended. Um, many times, you know, the unknown can be a little scary and there's some apathy and apprehension, uh, you know, on transition or change. Um, but for our school system, I feel that the transition uh, has been a healthy one. Our schools are in much better um, situation than they were prior uh, through the transition. Um, I still feel that we need to work together um, at the mayor's office uh, with the school committee to continue funding gradually our uh, public schools. Mr. Ellis. Oh, I feel that the upgrading of our ratings for our school system has been on the upswing. Uh, we are all paying more attention to the way and the manner of our educational system to our children, which is our future. Uh, and as I have stated earlier, and I will continue to state, we need to have the input of the school committee, the school superintendents, the educators, the people that are out there in the field every day with our children, as to what direction we need to go to make sure that our ratings continue on an upward move and what direction we need to go to make sure that that will always be the future as far as the common school system goes. Mr. Murray? I think the uh, proof, proof is in the pudding, as eating a pudding, is that you really have to look at what they've done, as I said earlier, as far as a administration, school committee, we probably have one of the best school committees in a long time that we've had in Cumberland. I've lived here a long time. They're active, they're working, they're putting out challenges to everybody that works. We have hired some very top, not I, but we have hired some very top administrators. The teachers now, uh, I feel, are getting a support that they need, and I think that goes a long way. Because whether you want to agree to it or not, there are challenges all over the place. It's just not the charter schools, uh, whether it's Mercy Mount or private schools or whatever. One of the things that I look at that I think is very important is that I want to see the children of Cumberland stay in Cumberland and be educated in Cumberland. And by doing that, you have to have a broad program. You have to have the academics working for you. You have to have the athletics. We have probably some of the best athletic teams that, are, that have been around in a long time. And again, my, my children played. But you have some great, now a person coming out of the middle school is gonna look at our system and say, well, I don't really have to go to LaSalle. LaSalle's gonna call, cost me, I'm sorry for that doctor. I didn't mean to throw a dig on that. <laughs> but you, don't have to spend that money because we can offer you the same thing. And I think that's the goal that has to be, we have to look at. We have some great educators now in this town 
that are dedicated. You look at the principal of the high school. The job he's done in our high school has just been phenomenal. And I think that's what we have to continue to do to bring our system up where people want to stay in Cumberland and get their education. And it also helps the residents on their property values because if we have a great school system, then their property values are going to go, go up and that's what we all want. Thanks, Mr. Morey. You guys are all pretty good because neither of you, none of you answered the question that I asked, but that's okay. <laughs> I get that. I know that there's some times when, you know, the supporting issues and non-supporting. But I will want to, I do want to pin you down on one thing. Tell us a little bit about what you might want to do different. You've had a chance to see the new school committee come in. They've made some great changes here. The facilities look good. Is there anything in your mind that as mayor, as the leader of the town, and as the leader of, of somebody who is supporting the school system, what would you do differently than maybe they're doing now? And I'll start with you, Mr. Alves, because I think we started with you on this question. Uh, again, it is communication. What direction do we want to go? Where and how can we get there? It's going to be a collaborative effort between the school committee, the administration, and also the mayor's office. And I would like to take a quick moment just to make mention that I want to commend every school teacher and every administrator in the school system of the town of Cumberland. And I personally know of a situation where this family was disheartened with a situation that took place within their family and their student. And the school department took an active role in trying with guidance people, the police department, and also the educators to bring this whole situation to a positive uh, result. And let me tell you something, it was so great to hear this story and I just want to congratulate everybody on it. I can't get into it because it's a personal thing. And I just say that they are out there doing the very best that they can for each and every student and each and every parent of this town. Thanks, Mr. Rowles. Um, Mr. Morey? You know, we give approximately $39 million to the schools. That's not the overall budget because the other comes from other sources. I would like to see, and I think it would be important, to see and work together from the mayor's office through to the schools, school committee, the uh, administration, as to how we can tighten up and basically save dollars. We can't keep going and giving X amount of dollars every time we turn around. We have to work together to get to a point where it's not a burden. I had a, a person to talk to me the other day and said, why can't we go in and paint some of our classrooms in a couple of the schools? And I think that's a good question. Why can't we? But if we use our head and use the money wisely, we're going to get there. We don't have to keep looking for money elsewhere. Tim, thank you. Um, I feel that an opportunity was lost um, at a time when our public schools were through challenge, they were challenged, um, and I feel that at that time an opportunity was lost of um, better communication between the mayor's office, the school committee, to find a way out of those challenges. Um, I feel that that opportunity um, lost um, now is bringing a heavy burden on our taxpayers. Uh, it's causing um, an unfair situation to our school committee and their budget. Um, so I would have made all efforts possible as mayor uh, to uh, create a healthy environment of uh, trust, trusted communication uh, with the school committee to remedy that situation then and um, hopefully avoid the situation that we face now. Thank you very much, gentlemen. We'll, we'll change course just a little bit here and talk a little bit about some, um, some town and school department uh, issues. There's a, a, a lot of things being said these days about regionalization and, and um, collaborating and, and sharing of services. So with that in mind, what resource sharing would you folks like to explore um, between the town and the school departments? And I actually had Mr. Mori here starting on this one. 
What resource sharing? Is the question within the within the between town the, between the, within the town between the town and the school department? Is there an well, opportunity for resource sharing? We a few months back we had uh, the uh, finance committee and the uh, and the school department uh, school uh, uh, committee wor working on different projects. I happened to be on one of them with one of the school committee uh, members, and that was to what could we do? Uh, a couple of examples are. Uh, you people have a very capable uh, uh, resource director. The town has a pretty much a, 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 a part-time uh, director. Uh, we have a very strong financial leader in Brian Sylvia, and I feel very strongly that we could do more within our department to help the, uh, uh, the schools. Uh, there's also, I mentioned earlier, about the facilities here in Cumberland. We took over Tucker Field, and I had this conversation with one of the school committee members just recently, is that could we take over all outside uh, grounds from the school, and there's another way to work together. So there are numerous things that we could sit down with, and I would definitely do that uh, once I become mayor, to see where we could have savings on both sides. Thank you, Mr. Mori. Mr. DaCosta. Tim, as mayor, um, that will be one of my priorities. Again, create efficiencies, starting with the mayor's office throughout the whole government. But I feel that um, accounting, IT departments, purchasing um, buildings, infrastructure, we can find ways to share our resources. Uh, with uh, with our schools and stop the duplication of efforts and expenses. Thank you, Mr. Owls. I feel that the consolidation of services within the school department, the school system, and the town government, and the uh, offices at the town hall and throughout, uh, if in fact we could utilize the same services to go out to bid and get the best price possible instead of going for uh, four items, we'd be going for eight items. All eight items would be used within the municipal part and also the educational part. So if in fact we could consolidate our ideas, the school committee's ideas, and consolidate these services so that we get the most for each dollar that we are spending, that would be the direction that we would want to go in. Thank you very much. Now, this next question starts with you, Mr. Alves. Um, as you know, the Cumberland Public Schools must submit a budget to the mayor and the town council each year. The Mayoral Academy, which is a public charter school, does not. Would you support having the Mayoral Academies submit their own budget to the town for funding approval versus having the funding come through the Cumberland Public School System? I feel that the funding should be coming through the school systems. Uh, we should know exactly where each and every dollar that the taxpayer is spending uh, for that charter school is going and in what direction it's going in. If, in fact, they uh, do not have this information, then I think it should be a requirement of them. Thank you. Mr. Murray. I believe there's some regulations on that, uh, mainly because the state controls the funding that goes through the, to the charter schools. Uh, so I'm not sure that we could uh, look at the budget. But I think if we go back to a couple of questions uh, back, that I think if we work together, charter schools, public schools, how do we educate our total 4,700 plus students uh, all together? I think all that can be worked out. But I think by law, I, I think that the charter schools are not uh, required to, to have their budget come to the mayor's office. That's correct, but I just, want, I'm wondering if you would support an effort to try and make that happen. Does it make more sense to do it that way? Well, I think it wastes your time because it's not gonna happen until the formula changes. Thank you. Mr. DeCosta. Tim, uh, I would be in support of, um, of more transparency from the, the charter schools. Um, Again, some of the restrictions come from the state, from unfair laws uh, to our Cumberland educational system. Uh, so again, as mayor, I will be a very loud voice 
at the state uh, in partnership with our reps and senators. We got to work together on this. Um, but we need to be vocal, we need to be strong and loving hard for our Cumberland fair funding that uh, our school needs. And uh, again, to answer your question, I would be in favor of more transparency from the charter side. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, this next question will start with Mr. Murray. Um, if elected mayor, what will you do specifically to support the continued growth towards excellence in the Cumberland Public Schools? Well, again, I think we talked about this a number of times tonight, is that uh, you need a mayor, and I will be that mayor, that works day in and day out, working with the schools, working with the administration, developing plans that will help make the schools the best schools available. We have to get back, as I said earlier, when my children went in the 80s into the uh, school system, we were probably number three in the, in the state. We have to get back to that level, and I think it, uh, uh, it behooves anybody that goes into the mayor's office to work. We've had a kind of a push and shove for the last few years, as I see it being on the council. I think that barrier can be broken down and we can all work together to again make an outstanding school system here in Cumberland. Mr. DaCosta. Tim, thank you again. Um, the growth of our school system starts with the success of our children and to accomplish that we have to provide them the tools necessary so they can be successful. Um, I will work as mayor with the business community with the parents PTO, school committee, and the town council to ensure that funding is appropriate for the success of our children. And Mr. Alves. Again, I feel that the input from the school administration in the mayor's office with listening power to find out exactly where the educators feel that we are lacking, exactly where we need to have uh, additional attention and to make sure that we work collectively together. But that has to come from the educators. That has to come from the school committee. And the door at the mayor's office will always be open for some positive direction, some positive um, attitudes, and some positive knowledge as to where we need to go and how we should do that collectively. Not by one, not by two, but all together the taxpayer, the educator, and the administration. Thank you very much. The next question is for Mr. DaCosta to start. As mayor, you know, we talk a little bit about town-wide learning as an initiative, not just in the school system, but as a town in general. So as mayor, what would your vision be for the school and the community-wide collaboration, and how would you support it? Tim, anything that benefits the growth, the development, and uh, the success of our children, as mayor, I will be in favor. I don't want to sound repetitious, but this is a team effort. We have to work together with the parents and the school committee uh, to accomplish that. So the bottom line on our public schools is what can we do together as a community to ensure the success and the future of our children and grandchildren and provide them the tools necessary for that success. So I will be a partner on that. Thank you, Mr. Alves. We have out there CYOs. We have the Common Lincoln Boys and Girls Club. We have the PTA. We have a lot of school uh, knowledgeable people out there. We have ex-teachers and we need the participation of all of them with the mayor's office to find out exactly how we can better the educational system and everybody that's involved in that system. And again, I say that through open dialogue, not just once a year when they come in so that we can talk about the budget process, but as to the needs of each and every neighborhood, each and every school, and each and every educator in the town of Cumberland in conjunction with the mayor's office. Mr. Murray. We have this now, and we have to look at the programs. We have OCYL that we do support as a town. 
We have after, uh, after school programs. I know Jenny has a program that uh, she runs after school. There's other programs. Uh, we are working together. As I said earlier, the OCYL is working with some of the uh, middle school people, with the boys club, and that has to continue. However, for us to do the right thing for the town uh, township is that we got to get the word out. I believe there's a lot of people in this town that don't know what's going on and how many uh, educational programs there are. And by every one of those being used, we are going to help the students. Uh, the, again, the example of the $100,000 grant that we have in our line item with Dr. Matheson is, uh, is heading up. What a great program. It's helping uh, probably 87 uh, students. And we've got to come up with those things. And as mayor, I would look at it each year to, to do the same thing and continue those programs running. But we have to get the word out and have to let people know what's going on in the, in the town of Cumberland. Uh, Mr. Alves, one, this is a new question, by the way. Sorry about that. At one point in time, the town offered adult education classes uh, in the public schools. Um, I think, in fact, at one point I taught a computer course when computers were just starting out. Um, do you support bringing back adult learning uh, in using the schools to do that? I have no problem whatsoever with anyone wishing to further and better their education. There are job opportunities out there with skills that some of us do not have. And if, in fact, we can better the job opportunity for some family member to be able to go to these classes and these programs, I would be full favor of doing that so that we can better our community. Mr. Murray? You know, I remember back when I was traveling around the country, uh, Flint, Michigan had a great program within their schools uh, to help the adults uh, because the schools are being paid for anyway by the taxpayers. And I, I believe, and I think Lincoln also ran quite a program a few years back where people could go in and either train in computer. I mean, they had cooking classes. In fact, I was going to send my wife to that cooking class, and I didn't. Uh, but, that is uh, dangerous. However, I uh, really believe that if, if it's available, and again, it does not cost the taxpayers uh, money, I would support that 100%. And Mr. DaCosta. Tim, yes, I would be in favor of adult education um, at no cost to the taxpayer, of course. And I feel that it would be a great opportunity to retrain our workforce uh, like you yourself mentioned, uh, computer courses, uh, technology, te technology. Um, it's something that I would support. And um, again, um, as long as it wouldn't incur an expense to the taxpayers, uh, maybe being an adult education, um, you know, they could contribute for, for, that, uh, for that education themselves. Great. You know, each of you talked about um, adult education and saying that there would be no cost, no additional cost to the taxpayers. So if we're on that, how do we use the facilities that we have now that the school department owns and that the town owns, how do we utilize those to generate revenue um, for either in support of the schools or in support of the, in support of the, the field, the Tucker field? Um, you know, what are some of the things that we can do with, the, with our facilities right now? And that question starts with you, Mr. Mori. Well, let's, let's start with Tucker Field. We spent a million dollars on that facility. Um, we tried to raise money. I still have a high hopes for it, for the uh, brick sales to the alumni. Uh, that program was developed so that we could uh, pay for a lot of the maintenance in the field and a lot of extras that we need. Um, we're also going to come out with a full-scale advertising program uh, at the uh, facilities at the field. That brings revenue in. Uh, the same thing going back for the education, uh, adult education. Uh, you have to be careful because you can't make it too high or we're not going to have people take advantage of it. So we would again have to work with the schools, the uh, school department, to see if there's a way of doing it without a big increase in uh, monies to do it. And 
once you bring the people in like that and they pay a tuition, you definitely got to raise some money. Thank you very much, Mr. Mori. Mr. DeCosta. Thank you, Tim. I think Cumberland is great public facilities. Uh, I can think of uh, our pool house. That would be a great opportunity to um, invite neighboring communities that may not have such a great facility in their towns to, uh, at a cost, utilize our pool. That would be uh, a way of uh, raising funding for our uh, educational system. Um, again, our sports facilities, great sports facilities that Cumberland has. Um, I see this as a, as a, um, uh, an area where the school committee and our parks and recreations director can work together uh, and identify exactly what can we uh, attract to utilize our facilities and in turn raise money for our public school. Mr. Alves. I understand that there are programs out there that are state and federally funded, more federally funded than state funded, where in fact a tuition is paid uh, for a class to be taught in a certain category, whether it be in the workforce, whether it be in the educational field, or whether it's going to be something that's going to uh, better the community itself. So if in fact we have the ability to get a tuition to use our facilities, have our teachers make extra money as far as their teaching facilities go, and the, the school department is also making money on that tuition, I feel that that's one good program to go in and that'd be a positive direction, again, with conjunction, with permission, with the knowledge of the school department. As far as uh, the fields go, and as far as um, trying to get revenues in, um, I've talked to landscapers who say that they wouldn't mind taking a particular field and saying for six months or that one particular school year, um, we are probably uh, manicuring and taking and addressing this particular field at no charge to the school system so that they can get some advertisement out of it. Also, there are organizations within the town of Cumberland that would love to develop a book stating that we support the athletic team, or we support the swim team, or we support the uh, uh, girls team, and also have that book sold and the revenues come back to the school department. Thank you very much. Um, going back to a little bit about communication, and I know that we say that, well, I'm gonna spend time you know, trying to build a bridge with the uh, school committee. Um, how do you, improve that communication? I mean, we, you said, Mr. DeCasso, we lost an opportunity. So starting with you, how do you improve it? How do you, how do you what are the things you're gonna do to try and um, work with the school committee and show them that you genuinely are, are committed to them? Yes, Tim, uh, the word is trust. Um, we have to have trust in each other and we gotta work together. So as my, uh, I will create an environment, uh, a healthy environment where the school committee is always can feel welcome to come into my office and discuss any needs, any issues that may be uh, on the table. Um, we did lose some opportunities because of no trust. Mr. Alves? I have said it and I'll repeat it again, the fact that we need to have open dialogue uh, with everybody that has to do with the educational system. And I'm talking uh, from the superintendents to the school committee down to the um, mechanics of the school teachers and let them bring to my office the needs that they feel that is going to lead this town into a better educational system that we have now and what their thoughts are. Without open communication, without putting all the thoughts together, there's gonna to be no sense of direction other than one wants the money, the other one wants to say why. And I think that open communication, open dialogue, and I'm not talking about once a year when a uh, school budget comes in, I'm talking about on a quarterly basis. Everybody get together. Give us the ideas that you think that you need to go forward. Give us the ideas that you think that we may go forward with and tell us what you know that's out there that's working in other communities so that we can try and implement together. Thank you, Mr. Ellis. Mr. Murray. 
I think what it's called is leadership and respect. The mayor has to have that leadership and respect to be able to coordinate with the school department, the administration. If they have a respect for the person who's going to be the next mayor, then I think that issue is very easy because they, can't, they will and can work together. I come from the corporate world and I'm very big on getting together, having meetings, uh, to discuss things, not once a year, but maybe once a month. And that's why I said earlier that we have, uh, I would have a liaison from the town council uh, to the schools back to the mayor's office so that the mayor, that I would know exactly what was going on and not be surprised, which happens a lot of times when they come to us because there's an emergency. We should be on top of every issue and it will cost less money. When you're on top of everything, it will cost less money. So I would definitely say that if that leader has the, the respect, uh, then, it, then we'll be able to work together. And it's mutual. It could be uh, we have to have respects for the administration that's uh, out there now. Great. Thank you very much. Well, folks, I think that we um, don't really have enough time for another question. Uh, so what I'd like to do is um, throw this back to the candidates. And instead of giving you one minute, we'll give you two because we have just a little bit more time. Um, and we'll start the same way we will end the same way we started off uh, with Mr. Murray making his uh, closing statement. Yes, first, I would like to again thank Tim, Jenny, the PTOs for having this. I think it's very worthwhile to hear who are you looking for as the next leader of, of the town of Cumberland? I'm a little bit upset to hear uh, some of the statements made about where we are as a town. Uh, I don't see a change that has to be made, a drastic change. Our town is in great shape. And I think a lot of people that know and have seen what's going on agrees to that. Well, financially, we're very stable. We just had another bond increase which was the third one in less than two years, which, by the way, I sat on all those reviews. It's a very important factor so that when we look and we have $4 million that are in our debt service with the schools, that's helping the schools out, and you better be able to have a good bond rating. Uh, communication is going to be a big thing for the next administration, and I have the full confidence in handling that. Uh, I know the people. I know people that are on the school committee. We're going to be very fortunate, hopefully, on the town council to have some passionate people on education. It's going to mean a lot. I keep talking about 4,700 students, and, that, and that's my goal, is to how do we better educate them by keeping within the system that our senior citizens and some of the people that are out of jobs are not going to get hurt. We have to work on that. So I think it's very important when you go to the polls to understand that and to pick the leader that you have the confidence in that is going to run this town. Continue to run it well. Make other changes as necessary, but to run it well as it is now. And I hope you vote for me come September 9th. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Murray. Mr. DaCosta. Thank you, Tim, as well. I'd like to thank you very much for the wonderful job of moderating this forum tonight. Um, the parents, PTO, Jenny as well, uh, thank you again very much for the opportunity that you gave us, uh, the candidates running for mayor, to uh, explain, express, and uh, speak about education tonight. Um, education is a very important issue uh, on my campaign. It's a very important issue for our town. It's an issue that we need to work together to find the solutions necessary to provide our children and grandchildren the tools needed to be successful in the future. Technology, science. We owe this to them. It's their legacy, and we need to provide them with these tools. So the basic question is, who do you trust? Who do you vote for? Who can lead our town forward? And uh, many times, we have to look to the past. 
learn from it, and set the course for the future. Um, in my view, we have a very clear choice on this election. Continuation of the status quo, same policies of old, that raise our taxes every single year, that saw our infrastructure depleted, that saw assaults and attacks and loss of our open spaces and parks, or opt for change. Not just change, substantial change, a partnership with the taxpayers of our town, an administration that will serve the people, that will listen to your concerns and will address your questions respectfully and promptly. I think this is very important on this election to reflect and think where do we want our town to be, where do we want our children to be, and where do we want our education and public schools to be in the future. So with that in mind, when you vote on September 9th, I respectfully ask for your support, ask for your vote, and ask to be a partner with me as mayor at the town hall to affect the change that Cumberland needs for the future of our children. Thank you. Mr. Alves. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you uh, for the opportunity to sit here and talk about the uh, educational system and uh, the future of our students. Um, everybody that was involved, I want to thank them so much. Uh, I would like to say that I propose real solutions where I will provide real leadership needed and lead the charge to get the required resources, tools, and educators needed to provide our students with their needs. I also have the opportunity, or I've had the opportunity to have been elected um, to the town council in the past for nine terms, a total of 18 years. So I do know what it is to participate in government. I do know what it is to adhere to the needs of the taxpayers. I do know what it is to have and gain the respect of my colleagues sitting there as a town council to have become the council president and also the uh, liquor board chairman. So the needs of the town will always be with me there at the heart. I will be the ears and the knowledge that I have been, obtain I have been had obtained and with the knowledge that we will be able to share together, I firmly ask you to support me as your mayor on September 9th. And I want to thank you so much for all of your time. Let's give him a round of applause, everybody. Thank you very much. Before we go, I just would also like to thank Jenny Copens, uh, Pete Langton, and Bill Denon uh, to help put this uh, together. Uh, of course, the PTOs of the Cumberland Public Schools, the parents and friends of the Blackstone Valley uh, Prep, uh, Mike Weber of CumberlandEducation.org, which is where you will be able to see the streaming uh, of this uh, presentation tonight. Um, Remember that uh, September 9th is a primary day, and that is effectively election day for our next mayor of the town of Cumberland. We hope that you've enjoyed and learned a little bit from our candidates about their positions on uh, education for the town of Cumberland. And with that, I'd like to wish you all a very good night, and God bless you.